it's Chris. So this is something new. We'll try something different today. You know, I was just on vacation, out of town for over a week, and a bunch of stuff arrived, right? So you guys kind of want to know, like, what's coming in, what's on there, you know, give you some rambling, give you some thoughts, give you some uh, just honest reactions to me opening some stuff up and letting you know why I'm interested in it, letting you know a little bit about it, and then just kind of seeing where this goes. So like Board Game Co. does in a way, like a little bit of unboxing and rambling all in one. Ready? Bunch of games. You get to see a little behind the scenes. Let's go. So we've got a couple of the smaller box games here on the table. Got a few sitting next to me and a few behind the camera. We'll shuffle through them. I'll let in my thoughts and just some honest, you know, first reactions as we go along. So this actually is a little bit before I left for vacation, but Summoner Wars 2. These are two of the latest expansions from uh, Plaid Hat Games. The Deepwood Grokes and the Forged. You know, I, I look at this. This is like your machines, and these are like your antithesis going into like the swamp and your creatures from that side of things. And I'm always intrigued by this game of what they've been able to do and manipulate and how different these decks are as a whole. And so the fact that this is just no different, it's just kind of cool. I love this game as a whole. This is clearly one of my favorite games that's come out in the last five years. This is probably a top 10 game for me all time at this point. And I love the asymmetry of these factions. And the cool thing is, I mean, you just buy one of these little packs, the base game itself comes with everything you need to know. And then you get to see how these guys are different here. The setup, let's actually get to the cards here as we go along. Blue Warrior is well prepared after summoning, add two boosts to it. Imbued Strength was fun for each boost to a maximum of five. Who are our good guys though? Let's see. Concoct, this unit attacks and destroys an enemy unit and you retrieve a potion uh, event from your discard pile, reveal it and add it to your hand. Ar Ar Arcan <laughs> Arcane Cry, after a friendly unit within three spaces of this unit is destroyed at a boost equal to the number of boosts that was on. So, I mean, just some cool cards here. I like the aesthetic. Again, I'm not sure it's necessarily for me, you know, until you play it. That's the biggest downside of something like this. But the intriguing aspect, and this was actually the Forged, was the one I was actually more interested in, and I have yet to try it out. So we're going to kind of see what this one entails too. But the mechanical approach, you know, the machinations of machines is just kind of a cool theme. It's kind of like the Shadow Elves for me with the base game. And so we'll kind of see what this one has in store for us in addition here. If I can get the plastic wrap off and we can get down to the good guys here as a whole. So then again, we have the inventor, master builder. You may build structures diagonal. After building a structure, you may damage an enemy card adjacent. To the, ooh, I kind of like that. Sort of the passiveness of this in an aggressive way. This card may move. After it moves, add one damage. Once per turn, during your build phase, you may force this unit to move one to three spaces. But it has three attack and seven health. Ooh, wow, this is kind of different. I like this one already. The Hellmaw. Heavy mobile. This card may move at a damage. After this unit attacks an enemy card, it may target a friendly structure within three spaces. Place target on the bottom of the owner's draw pile. Wow, this is going to manipulate things in a really cool way. This is probably a really, really advanced deck. Like, this is not a deck my wife would like to play because it's just, you know, she likes the straightforward combos. I like the crazy, like, two or three steps ahead combos. That's like when my brother Ming did their combat dueling asymmetric game that was in crowdfunding last year. I love that because it's just so two or three spatial movements ahead. And so, oh gosh, you know what? Okay, well, I know it's getting played next for fun, this stuff, because again, this is my favorite type of thing, right? Now, not kidding, I have four decks just sitting here next to me so that's just kind of cool now next up actually let's go let's go this one because i bought this one at retail and it showed up while i was on vacation i really wanted to bring bale of eternity with me but it showed up literally the day i left so it showed up about like five hours after we left and i was super irritated because as much as i didn't want to bring even this size of box with me on vacation i really wanted to try this out because people were hyping this as one of their better games of 2020 three even that had early access to it and let's just kind of see what this looks like again i've read through the rule book a little this one and it's relatively straightforward it's you're just putting cards down to the outside of this board here scoring points up to 60 or number of rounds i think like 10 or 11 
and 10 and you just put like number of cards down on the outside and you just select them and then you combo and then you pay resources based on how you've selected them in the first place to play them into your area it gives me a very uh chroma arcana vibe that i just covered in crowdfunding and so you can see they've got this little dude that's just like totally aesthetic you put him in the middle and just shows stuff off but otherwise it's just one big deck it's just one big deck of cards and it's all just crazy asymmetric stuff. And I love this, right? That was one of the biggest things I loved about Expeditions was just that all of these were different and all of these are doing different combos. And the tricky part is, right? You can only have so many spots in your tableau in this game based on the number of rounds it is. So the first round, you can only have one. In the second round, you can still only have a total of two and they stay out there. And so the end of your action phase, I don't know why I'm going to shuffle this, but I'm going to shuffle it just to get them more mixed up for the game, next gameplay, that you have to eventually get rid of them to change your combo. And that was the cool thing with Wizards of Grimoire, if you remember me covering that dueling game, was that you eventually have to change your engine halfway through. And so this is very much the same in how you're doing that. So again, just, I like the artwork. I just bent the cards a little bit by shuffling them and it just works. Can't even pronounce half of these. Pegasus, I can pronounce that one. Rock Golem, Freya, Boulder, but then they're all different. There's enough text at the bottom that it's not overwhelming but it's enough that it's very intuitive. So it sort of gives me a little bit of fantasy realm vibes. Again, this insert is kind of bleh, right? This insert is kind of worthless because again, you know, I actually had to supply these bags for this one. I opened this one up beforehand and you know, I could just chuck this insert. This insert really doesn't make it any easier. Put this in a bag and put this and the box could actually be half as big because this is kind of arbitrary. I wish you almost would have just given me a couple of trackers instead so it's fine but this is the main crux of things which is why you could totally make this even half the size of what it is if you really wanted to in the first place so either way i'm super excited and i can easily see this if i remembered to actually put the rulebook back in the box before closing it being on my top 10 list of 2024 already depending on how the actual action combo system goes because i guess that's the other side of things dichotomously with fantasy realms is i thought i would like fantasy realms and it just turned out to be too mathy for me right just way too much, just pure math, less fun. So anyway, staying with the two-player duelers though, this button shy is upcoming from their campaign here in the near future. This is Battlecrest season two. And I just have the base game here, but it also adds a relatively robust solo mode. And this has just two basic characters. And if you're not familiar with Battlecrest, it's in button shy. So you've got like your 18 card situation and you get this little map setup that you can see down here. And it tells you, okay, um, you set up the landmark cards, which are basically like your land cards, and then your characters traverse around and through these. And these landmark cards are going to actually have uh, symbols on them that if you're adjacent to them, as you can see here, you get the benefit there. And the unique thing about this, and the way I really like this game, is that you have your main character, and then you have their powers. And what happens with this is if you utilize them, you have three of them, you utilize them, you tap it, right? But if you want to refresh it and get it anew, you don't actually untap it. You flip it over to the other side and you flip over all the ones that are tapped. So if you've only used, say, these two, and this one's still there, so if that was your starting three, all of a sudden when you refresh, these two get flipped over to a new one, this one stays there, so your set of combos is kind of now different. And how you maneuver that around this little you know, asymmetric land setting, and it's completely compatible with the previous Battlecrest, is just kind of nifty. It's not gonna be for everyone. The combos aren't as intuitive. It does turn out to be a little bit of a slugum, but this is also a game where, as you can see, you know, if you like the portability, if you like the small size, right, this is really great for traveling. It does take up a little bit more table space sometimes because of that grid layout, but it also just works. So, that's why I kind of like it, too, in the first place. Food for thought. Now, next up, we have Cat Blues. Now, this is a Kinesia game. This is from Bitewing. This is going to be coming out very shortly to crowdfunding. And what we've got going on here actually is a magnetic case. Look at that. I like that. And this is actually a trick-taking game. I wasn't expecting uh, to be enjoying a trick-taking game as a whole, but I love the idea of trick-taking games. As a, you know, Euchre player... As a Hearts player, we played Hearts all the time growing up in my household. That was the one game that my dad would actually play, right? Wouldn't play anything else, wouldn't learn how to play anything else, still doesn't know how to play Euchre, Spades, or, you know, even basically Crazy Eights, but Hearts. 
he was the person always that would shoot the moon too, if you know what I'm talking about, right? Right? Where you get all 26 of the points so that everyone else gets 26 and you get zero. And so the trick taking of this, I mean, it's just it's kind of a cool theme. Look at these cards. These are nice. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, and I guess, you know what? The other reason this appealed to me, I'm a cat person. We have two cats in this household. And you know what? Each of the cats has claimed a boy. And it's not me. It's not me. The older cat has claimed my oldest. And the second cat, the younger cat, has claimed my middle. And so that's just kind of the way things are. And that's the way, you know, things are in my household. We're kind of debating about getting a third just for the third kid. <laughs> because the other two cats actually sleep with the boys at night. Like, they don't sleep with us. They come by us for treats and for pets occasionally during the daytime, but at night, they are totally with the boys in a nutshell. And so, again, this one, just a little bit different, because you're, like, putting cards up, if I remember the rules correctly when I was skimming through them here before the video, and you have the stacks of tokens that you're going to be collecting and turning up the cards from the face-down deck, placing them in a row, and then if a joker's revealed, each person draws like another card, and then you auction and bid for the cards before, you know, doing the actual tricks. So I think this is just going to be a really cool game. It's something that's going to be a little bit more accessible from a trick-taking standpoint. Like, I really like the crew. I really like the crew. You know, sale from all play for me was a miss. It was too hard. And so I think this is going to be something in between with more strategy, but it's not going to be like Ghosts of Christmas either, which I, you know, my family just fell flat with. As a trick-taking, heavy, euchre-playing you know, extended family, I just didn't have fun with it, if that makes sense to you, right? And so I think this is going to be a nice middle ground, and I am a Nizia, I'm, I'm becoming a Nizia lover just like Bitewing, and so no qualms about that. Let's, let's skip the last small box here just for a second, and let's go to this one, because this one was also one that arrived with Veil of Attorney that I really wanted to bring with me on vacation. I'm glad I didn't because it's heavier than I thought it was going to be. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. And that's Aqua from the OP and Sidekick Games. And this is the one that's making the hotness and making the waves on a couple of the bigger channels. And again, like I don't get review copies sent to me on a lot of this stuff, folks. Like some of this is review. Some of this is just me buying it. And this one was a buy it. And the weird thing about this one is there's no insert whatsoever. So you just have all of these tiles here just basically sitting in the box all next to each other. You've got your little racks here that they, you know, give you, which I don't really know if you were necessary at this point. And again, it's just a tile lane, Cascadia-esque underwater vibe going on, right? Tiles, again, like I, bags were supplied by me. Look, you can just see all of these tiles just sitting here down on the bottom. And again, different size, and you've got different big ocean life with different values on them. And then you've got the ones that are sort of oblong shaped here. And then the ones that are just all with the uniform backing on this one. And these, I'm assuming, are your starter tiles as well that you're going to be having to make adjacent. And again, I don't even know how to play this one. I haven't even looked at the rule book. I like the aesthetics. I hate the fact that there were no bags or insert. Although, actually, no, I take that back. I didn't mind no insert. But, you know, the rule book here, it seems relatively straightforward. They show you the example of how you're going to be setting up the colored tiles with those racks in the first place. So I have high expectations for this as someone who is really a Cascadia lover. And that's why I picked it up at retail. You know me on this channel, like I don't do a whole lot of retail. I don't buy a whole lot of retail and I don't have a good track record with it in the first place. So you can you claim your coral cards, it says, establishing your biodiversity and you can attract large animals to fulfill their requirements, creating your habitats and reefs. So a lot of stuff, a lot of end game scoring here on the left page. Uh, variants there, advanced mode, family mode, so definitely more of a really Cascadia vibe with even not a solo mode to go along with it. Modifications, challenges, yeah, I mean, this totally screams Cascadia underwater at me, which, again, as someone who thought Cascadia was fantastic, I'm, I'm okay with this. Now, the, the, I guess the question you have to ask yourself with something like this, though, is, does it replace it? Can you have both? You can have, I'm just kidding, you can have both. Would you want both? Do you want both, though? And I guess that's the answer I don't have at this point as well. Uh, next up, though, review, speaking of review copies that don't get sent to me, this is a review copy that did get sent to me. This is Ketchup and Pandasaurus. This is Courtesans. And this is a backstabbing Ori flam esque game. And it says on the back, straight up, right? On each turn, play a card in your area, play a card in an opponent's area, play a card at the queen's table. And they're going to influence how each family is seen, and you want to disgrace other people. Like... I love me some take that card games. I love me some take that card games. So um, again, this is sort of right up my val alley. Valley. I was about to say valley there. 
and special rules for each of the cards to go along with them. Gain end and scoring. And when the courtier deck is empty, no one has cards left in hand. All spies are now revealed. Those at the queen's table are moved to their family without changing their levels. Uh, calculating each player's scores based on the values that you have going along each area there. So I think this could be a really fun take that style of game. And that's why I actually asked them for it. And I'm very pleased that they were willing to send it to me. Because, again, you know, for all of the stuff that gets asked out there, you know, you'd be surprised because a lot of it doesn't actually always work out, even with my size channel or any size. So, you know, unless you're like 20K plus, then you get pretty much whatever you want, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making that up. But it's just, it's always an interesting dichotomy to me, like who gets what and who decides what, because some definitely base it off of size and some base it off of interest and some base it off of fit and some base it off of paid. I just never seem to know. Like, I don't always know the rhymes or reasons, but I'm always just pleased when people respond to me in the first place, even if it's a no. So the cool thing I like about this, though, and I opened this up beforehand, it's a little playmat. A little playmat in this little box game. I like that a lot. And then these cards are actually super nice because I took these out of plastic before I opened this uh, for this thing. These are these look really nice. This is really impressive production. Not needing, like, super big, you know, over-the-top production, but it's just nice. It just works. So... Yeah, I'm intrigued to see. This gives me like a little bit of a lighter, more direct take that Oriflam. And I'm a big fan of Oriflam. That game is highly, highly underrated. People just don't like it because it's mean. And I have a feeling this is going to be mean too. So, well, I can be mean, right? I can be mean. I can do mean. Speaking of mean, the opposite of that, uh, these next two games, Detestable sent me and Draco. And my kids both saw these and they said, I want to play that. Dad, will you open that right now? So that is always a good freaking sign, right? When they look at this and they go, I want to play this. So Draco, the, the I forget what the other name of it. They have another game in the lines of this Chicken Island series. It's just a card tableau overlapping system where you just like basically sum up the icons you have and then everybody does damage to everybody and last one standing wins. And so my kids love that. And they saw that because it's like the similar world setting with this one. And they were like, can we play this? So War for Chicken Island, skirmish strategy game. No player elimination, it says, though. You probably can't see my face or my mouth. Each player controls an army of chickens and constructs led by unique characters. And you get to roll dice and battle each other. So my eight-year-old said to me tonight in bed before I filmed this, like, he's like, Dad, can we learn how to play that tomorrow? <laughs> Hadn't mentioned it in like a, almost a week. And he's like, yeah, can we play it? But the only problem I think it says age is 14 plus and it says one hour to two hours. And so that'd be my big concern. And I told him that, you know, I said, hey, buddy, this is really going to be a test of patience and a test of, you know, what you've got going on here. And so can you handle that? And that was the big question. Now, this insert is a little tricky because it doesn't have little side things on this top one. Uh, but there are the miniatures down below, too. And Draco and Detestable really have their, their production is top notch. These boxes are pretty much like the best boxes you'll ever see. And their quality content here, when you get on a gameplay basis, is freaking fantastic. And I'm one of those people who sorts by color, like not individual pieces, right? Like people have all the dyes of one color together and they sort it out in between games. Now, I got individual baggies and I do the colors. So here's your yellow, here's your red. I'm almost going to screw up the colors. I won't talk about that any further. And then, it's just, again, it's just kind of cool. I, it's totally weird. It's totally crazy. Il Poyozo. I don't have a clue. Range 2, draw any scroll from the discard pile. I don't have a clue how to play this yet. Uh, my kid wants to play, and so I'm going to try and teach him and learn it because, you know what? That's also how you get these kids more interested. You know, even if we play, like, 20 minutes, but if it intrigues him, if it captures him, that's what I'm going for, you know, because that's also what's going to port them into higher-level stuff as we get older and as they become more interested, and hopefully I, you know, sort of indoctrinate them a little bit more. Explosive chicken, an attacking unit gets plus 4 strength this combat and destroyed at the end of the combat. Okay, yeah, this is just the kind of craziness and chaos that, uh, again, I love. So, tokens, 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 grid-based system there, and it's just kind of cool. So, I can't wait to actually get this one to the table and let you know how it goes, because I can see this one being a big sleeper hit. Detestable and Draco are, are both ones that I, I put that insert on wrong, didn't I? Uh, just, you know, under the radar. Under the radar, underappreciated, you know, as companies that don't sort of get as much attention on crowdfunding, as don't get as much backing as a whole, and they really should, because they're putting out just solid, solid games. I mean that both literally, this box is one of the best quality games I've seen in a long time, and then also just 
mechanically. Speaking of mechanical great though, this is Dodo's Riding Dinos, right? The Dodo Dash. I am... I, I, I'm really excited about this one, folks. You know, genuinely, like, this is Mario Kart with dinos and dodos, and my kids love it, and you're dropping little, like, meeple-esque wooden things on your characters, knocking them across the board, one to six players, 20 minutes a game. Like, it's just crazy fun. And I'm smiling because this is the game that my kids love. This is This is the one that they absolutely adored, and you just get more fun stuff. Like here, I wasn't kidding. The projectiles for this game. A dodo projectile, a feather, an egg, bananas, logs, meteorites. Uh, you know, just things that you're just like dropping from here or flicking from a certain angle. Setup is relatively straightforward. You go around, there's an inner loop and an outer loop, depending on what length of game you want and which track you want in the first place. Race cards, there's green ones, red ones, simultaneous play. Anyone plays more than a one red card in a turn, they all cancel each other out. So is someone else playing a red one this turn? Or is it your turn to try and get away with it? And again, the production is just top notch. There's a rata thing, who cares? Um, but again, look at this. This is very, very nice. And these are different, it's compatible. And this is the more, I think, quick version, essentially. I don't I think so, than the original. And so I'm really, really going to be having fun with this one. So, and it is a review copy. But this was on one of my wish lists uh, for the end of the year as just a game that overachieves. Overachieves. This shouldn't be as much fun as it is, right? I remember covering this at the very beginning of my channel. The first one. And I was kind of like, that seems silly. That seems ridiculous. And then I got a copy of the first one. And I was like, this shouldn't be this good. I shouldn't be enjoying this. Like, I didn't feel like that was going to be the case. But it was. And it's just one of those things. One of those things that I just love being surprised by on the hobby. And that's the great thing about doing this and going out of your comfort zone sometimes. Because I would be willing to pull this out with my game group. Like, not just my kids. I would be willing and love to. Just weird, crazy stuff. Roll a die, advance that amount. Roll another die, all racers advance that amount. Roll two dice and advance that amount. I mean, just weird. It's all asymmetric and crazy. Here's your meteorite. Drop a meteorite for two damage. Each racer hit, draw one card, and advance two hexes. I mean, like, that doesn't make any sense. It's completely overpowered. Everyone, it's, you know, runaway leader. It is. I don't care. I don't care. These miniatures are, are actually really cool. I love the fact that they're all different colors. And if you don't like the miniatures and you just want to go with the meeples too, they give you the meeples. So, um, Detestable, Draco, again, you guys you guys are killing it here. Um, I have nothing else to say about this but praise so far. And I'll, I'll do a formal review on this one for sure uh, by the time I'm finished playing it a few times. So, uh, expect to see more from this one in the very near future as well. The other one that came recently, and again, I still got the letter attached to the top of it, uh, but let me take the letter off for a second here and show you what this one actually is. This is Table Golf Association. Um, I covered this one last year on crowdfunding, and well, John sent me the new copy. This is going to be upcoming, uh, the crowdfunding campaign for their third, third one, I think, Meeple Beach Edition. And you know what? I opened this up earlier. And I was really impressed because, you know, a few of the small criticisms you go like, like, it's just me. It's just me, right? The first thing I opened up and it's like, okay, here's the welcome to book. And here is this terrain tile thing, right? It tells you what's on what side. Like that was one of my big things with the first one. Like you're like flipping them over and you know, oh, look, it's been addressed. Oh, look, hazard rules illustrated right there. Oh, you flip that over hazard reference chart. Everything you need to know for all of the hazards all right there. That's, that's really good. That's amazing, right? And you want some terrain? You want a little trophy? I don't need a little trophy, but trees, little trees. So just kind of cool stuff. This is, this is one of the most difficult games you'll ever play, but it simulates golf like you can't simulate otherwise on the tabletop. And the wooden components in here, I would say this, this wooden component is almost a must because the cardboard, I don't think would ner work nearly as well. Because if you've any, played any sort of flicking game, the cardboard just inevitably gets the little edge raised and it's just enough on the side to cause it to kind of tink or tink. And you're like, I hit the perfect shot and then it hit the edge and it screwed everything up. So the fact that they've said, okay, we're going to go with this. And yeah, you're going to pay for more of a premium for this one. But does it really matter? Yeah, it actually does in this case. This is one case where I, I would argue Deluxified needs to be Deluxified. 
And, you know, there's a little bit of prototype production right there. It's a little bit of a slight raise there from the wooden grain. You probably can't see it in the camera. But if I shine the light just right, maybe you can. Uh, but again, like, this is prototype copy. So, pre-production, one of those. I don't know. But, I mean, that's the big thing. It's got more hazards. It's got more different layouts of this. So, you're really customizing it. And my guess is, I'm assuming that this is completely cross-compatible. So, if you're interested at all, you could totally get this one. But... I mean, this is one that eventually, like, maybe I'll, I'm going to just give away to my brother-in-law because he's not a gamer, and I could totally see him just loving this game and playing this with his kids. Like, he's taught his kids how to golf, like, since they've been, like, age three. Like, he's a big golfer. He's, like, uh, once a week at least during the summer, like, basically summer, April to, like, November, once a week in Michigan, right, golfer. So um, I'm sure he would be interested if I got him learned how to play this in the first place to then take this to his kids. So... Um, he might be ending up with this copy eventually at some point rather than just staying in my collection. So, yeah. Now we got three more little things here at the end. Well, one little too big. I don't know why I said that. But one is Wandering Towers, right? I got this actually just to get me over the shipping threshold. Uh, this is the mini spell expansion one for Die Wandering Terme. Uh, back up there. The one that somehow didn't get nominated for Spiel. I know, again, I'm going to actually get all of these mini spell expansions. There's like a Raven Castle Tower one too. So I've been meaning to pick that one up, but I only can get it from a buyer overseas. So I just haven't been willing to follow through on that aspect of things. So that's one. And the other the other Bitewing Games one, we'll push this out of the way a second. Uh, the other Bitewing Games you can see here, Bebop. And this gives me Nizzy of Hives, actually. And uh, Bitewing has a type. And just like I have a type, and it's a good one, right? And so what you've got here is sort of a little bit different spin. You've got these dice that you're going to be using to kind of like claim seats, which are in the form of bands that get placed in these little hexes right here on grid in the first place, right? And so you got a couple different boards you're messing around with, and these are just kind of cool to look at. And again, the color scheme is... Top notch here. And the impressive thing, you didn't probably see there on the rule book, but both these Bitewing games, right? These are prototypes, folks. And they've already got the little QR code down here on how to play. So I don't even have to read this. But again, frankly speaking, it's really easy read. So it's really short. And a couple modules to go along with it. Special seats. Uh, four festival boards that you're going to be doing. And they give you a little bit of info on what's the difference between all these boards as well. He can give you some album recommendations here at the back if you're really a jazz person. I'm not, actually. We're actually getting into <laughs> uh, K-pop. K-pop in my house? Yeah, BTS is uh, rocking with both of my kids' iPads lately. So uh, I just hex-based, a little bit of grid dice rolling and tile placement. Again, you'll be seeing both of these very shortly from me, and I'm really impressed. Now, what's I didn't see these little boards, but... Special tile seats. Okay, so these are just a little bit of like the Zuvatus feel of hiding behind your screen and keeping track of things. And it gives you the actions. Again, relatively straightforward. Claim or book. End game scoring. Special seat tiles there. Oh, that's, again, reminds me very much of Cascadero in the sense that the strategy is on the actual play, not the I need a 1030 page rule book and, you know, deal with it from that side of things. So last up, Challengers. Beach Cup. This was the other retail game. I did a little research. I said, okay, which Challengers game was, am I going to get? And I went for it. I went for it. I really wanted to bring this one on vacation. This was the one that I really got it for for vacation purposes. And I was like, oh man, you know, that would have been great to have the kids, but the kids weren't interested anyway. So it was okay that they missed out. But this is going to be the other one alongside of those additional ones to give them something a little bit maybe step up. Although the Chicken Island one like already, again, is going to be too big. But I mean, it's you know, sort of King of the Hill war meets combos. And I'm not really sure, I'll be frank with you guys, of all of the games on this, I'm not sure I'm going to like this one at all. I have no idea. Stickers, I don't know about that. Ooh, punchers, okay, that's fine. Um, wow, okay, this insert's actually really nice. This is a really, really nice insert. When Oh, look at that, actually, the cards are underneath there? That's weird and crazy and kind of works as a whole. I don't know if I'm supposed to keep these cardboard things in there and keep them slotted. Should they stay exactly where they need to be or if I can just throw those away later? I'll figure that out. What else? It's like a little play mat there. Oh, yes! 
No one told me they had individual play mats, folks. This again, this is awesome. Like I'm, I, I now I feel okay with the price for this as well. Like I, I felt a little bit bad buying this, and I was a little bit like, you know, I don't really want to buy this. I really kind of just want to trade for it. And it wasn't one of those games, surprisingly, that I could really trade for. Like there's not a lot of people like for saying what it is and saying what the weight is and how it sort of plays. I didn't see a people. I didn't see a bunch of people trying to get rid of it. So, uh, I'm, you know, I'm just punching stuff out right now while we talk because then I don't have to do it later. But that's kind of it. That's kind of the lighter style of things. But this is like stuff that all came within like almost a week. Half my own doing. Okay, all of my own doing for the most part because I also requested some of those review copies. So, again, just very, very different across the board. And a little bit of insight into my thoughts as we're going across this. I need to finish punching this. And so that's about all I got. And I'm going to finish punching this and store it up and put it away so we can play it uh, maybe this weekend with the kids. Because the kids never get off their screens anyway. So cardboard, toss it. That's all I got. What do you think? You want more of this? Well, I'm going to do one more of this, I think, with uh, ISS Vanguard and Mythic Battles Ragnarok. But we'll see. If you guys don't like it. Let me know if you do like it, you want to see more of it through as many games as I could in a small amount of time. So hopefully a little bit of thought, rambling, insight, and usefulness, completely, utterly worthless at the same time. Eh, it's kind of fun for me. That's really what matters. Stay classy. Have a great freaking day. I really want to separate out all these little stars. They each have their little components and you got to like organize them and put them in the right direction. Just want to toss them all in and just be done with this. Like, I don't really want to do this right now. Like, I like the punching. I don't like the putting back in. And I worry that, you know, as soon as I tip this thing, these trophy things are going to go all over the place. And these stars are going to be everywhere. I don't, do I really care, though, at the same time? No. No, I really don't, to be honest. I'm completely okay with just picking this up after, you know, I open it again. So, um, not really that big a deal at the same time. Are you one of those people? Like, do you really um, want to make sure that it's all in the right place? or really matters to you a ton from that aspect. I'm, truth be told, not really at all. But I'm doing this because, well, present me thinks future me will appreciate it. Future me probably won't appreciate it, though, to be honest. Yeah, you know, it's a dilemma for future me to figure out. There you go.